Hello everyone, this is Frank. Welcome to another video from my tutorial series on how to achieve better audio playback quality from Sibelius using Vienna Ensemble Pro or linking Sibelius to a DAW. In this video, we will be discussing how to link Vienna Ensemble Pro to Sibelius, how to insert instances of contact within Vienna Ensemble Pro, and some brief tips on how to route audio within Vienna Ensemble, Ensemble Pro. Let's get started first by opening Vienna Ensemble Pro. Okay, now let's open Sibelius. Okay, and we're back. So first things first, we want to create a new playback device in the setup. So here's a stock Sibelius one. Let's create a new one, uh, Vienna Ensemble, drill, drill, drumline, video, tutorial. Let's do that. Okay, we'll leave the Sibelius player there just for giggles. Go down to the list here. Right, here's what the one we want to find, Vienna, not instrument, sorry, Ensemble Pro. AU audio, audio unit. You will notice there is another one that is a VST. If you're on the Mac and using Sibelius, you do not want to use the VST. Um, VST and Sibelius in the Mac does not play nice. So we'll do be an Ensemble Pro. And then we'll, for giggles for right now, we'll add the event input. Okay, so the devices we have here Vienna Ensemble Pro, audio unit. And the sound set. Um, so this Vienna Ensemble Pro instance is um, it Vienna Ensemble Pro loads into Sibelius as a multi-timbral instrument plugin. Um, what that basically means, multi-timbral means it can have you know multiple sounds with multiple instruments. Now the way MIDI works, every uh, virtual instrument, every multi-timbral virtual virtual instrument is limited to sixteen instruments. So since you know most scores most music scores um will have more than 16 instruments in order to get around that the folks over at the vienna symphonic library created this the vienna ensemble pro event input um it which acts like as another uh, multi-timbral instrument but it still connects to the same instance of vienna ensemble pro so that's basically this gives you 16 instruments and this gives you another 16 instruments and um you know you can just add as many as you want basically uh, so on and so forth just like you know you would do instances of contact when you're doing the um, the standard uh automatic virtual drum line setup so anyways uh you want to go over here sound set it's kind of already already loaded but you want to pick the manual version that we created in the last video not the the stock uh automatic one Okay, from this point, go over to manual sound sets, Vienna Ensemble Pro. This is the correct sound set. Use manual sound set. So here we will load our drumline instruments. Okay, over here we see the 16 channels, the 16 virtual instruments that we're limited to. Since we're going to do drumline instruments in here, we only need three. It uh, doesn't, doesn't hurt to have all 16 open. I just think it looks cleaner to have three or have um, what you're gonna use. So anyways, we'll click on the first one, program name. We will get the snare line, uh, apply. Channel two is where we'll put the tenors. Tenor line, apply. Channel three, where we'll put the basses. Bass line, apply. Okay, so now at this point, it's important to note that since we're not actually connected to anything yet, this test button will not work. That's fine. That's how it's supposed to be. Okay. Uh, before we get out of this, go back to active devices. Click on the instance of Vienna Ensemble Pro. Click on show. Um, so this here, we need to connect to the actual Vienna Ensemble program. Um, this step is here because, uh, like I said in my first video, Vienna Ensemble Pro is designed to work as a network virtual instrument solution. So 
you know, this is how you connect the different computers. If you're using VN Ensemble, you know, in the network, you know, if you have one computer with, you know, woodwind sounds and then another computer with brass sounds and another computer with percussion sounds, that's how you would connect all of them. So, all right, so here we're connected. Okay, everything's loaded up. We'll go ahead and save the playback device and close. All right, so before we exit, well, not exit, but move from Sibelius to Vienna Ensemble Pro. We need to go to the mixer. Since this is all manual, we have to connect the staves to um, to, Vien to uh, the instrument plugin manually. So Vienna Ensemble Pro, and then snare line manual. Vienna Ensemble Pro, then tenor line manual. Vienna Ensemble Pro, then baseline manual. Okay, that looks good. Get out of that. And now let's go to Vienna Ensemble Pro. So here we have our master bus um, you know, channel strip. What we need is contact. So these two buttons are for the Vienna instrument player, which is for their proprietary sounds, which I do use. But you know, right now we're talking about the uh, drumline instruments from contact. So what we're going to want to click is on insert plugin. Here, there's two versions, two things, to, um, two options, VST and AU. Here, we want to go to VST, Native Instruments. You can see we have multiple uh, choices for contact. We want to go with either the 16 out or the 8 out. I'm going to go with 16. And I'll explain why later, or sorry, in a minute. Um, do note, it, you could go the audio route, audio unit route. Native Instruments, Contact 5, but you see here, we only have mono and stereo. We want more than stereo, we want more than two, okay? So, Contact's loaded up. Go to Instruments. Go Snares, Manual, back up, Tenors, uh, Line, Manual, go back up, Bases, Baseline, Manual. Okay, so, have all our instruments loaded up. All right, next thing we need to be aware of is these two numbers. This first number one, number here is the MIDI port, okay? This first MIDI port, VE Pro plugin MIDI in one, this is that main um, instance of Vienna Ensemble Pro in the playback devices in Sibelius. So right there, MIDI port one is that in Sibelius. If we had switched this to two, that would be this event input here, right? Which can be kind of confusing because this is the first one. If we set this to three, that would be the Ensemble Pro event input two. So but that is how it works. So since you want to be in one, you will be here. Now this next one, is what uh, MIDI channels will accept. Since all three uh, virtual drumline instruments are going to the same MIDI port, we need to have it set to all. So it'll set to one, it only accept the first channel, which if you remember, that's the snare line. Um, second was only the tenors, third is the basis. So we want all of them, so we click all. Now within contact, here we just gotta make sure the MIDI channels are correct, which since we set them up in order, they should be. So snare is MIDI channel one, tenor line, tenors are MIDI channel two, bases are MIDI channel three. Now by chance, when you're setting this up, you put it out of order, it's not a big deal. You just click on the arrow, MIDI uh, port A, and then you select which, um, which channel, right? This should, uh, so this, this is all set up, this should work. So now, Go back to Sibelius, uh, go back to the playback devices, Ensemble Pro, snare line, we have sound, tenor line, we have sound, bass line, we have sound. So it all works. Now before we're done, one other thing I want to show you. What we need to do in here is create separate audio paths for each one of these instruments. So the snare line will be an output stereo one. 
what we do need to do next is create outputs for the tenors and bases. And here, how we do that, we go down here to outputs, click on the plus, number of channels to KT aux one. Okay, click OK. Do that again. KT aux one was used, was what we just used. And now we want to do KT aux two. Okay, and click OK. Now back here to, oh sorry, I'm about to skip a step. Tenor line, we'll switch this to stereo two. Basis, we'll switch this to stereo three. Okay, now let's go back to the mixer. Here's our instance of contact. Click the plus once and twice, okay? So if this is, uh, if this is done right, this channel here, um, this auto path here will be our snares. This one will be our tenors. This one will be our bases. So let's check it out if that was done correctly. Back to Sibelius. Playback devices. Manual sound sets. And Ensemble Pro. Let's go to test. There it is. Number two should come out here. And it does. And then bases. There we go. Now, why do you want to do this? Well, first off, panning. You know, you're not going to have your snares, tenors, and basses panned to the same direction or in the same spot. You know, so say you have, you know, your basses furthest left, your snares in the middle, and your tenors all the way to the right. Now, what's cool about the panning in VN Ensemble Pro, the default panner actually controls stereo width. So even though the snares are in the middle, um, this is keeping them by, by uh, clicking on the edges here, can make it uh, a more narrow stereo image. Um, if you choose to, or you know, if you don't want to leave it wide, you can do that too, um, you know, however you want your sound to be. And then uh, here, effects, here we can load any effects we want. So, you know, for example, um, the EQ, in my opinion, is, should be different um, between all the instruments because, you know, the, the frequency information on the snare is going to be different than the bass. So, you know, here you can load, um, you know, different EQs for each one because you're going to want to EQ them differently. Okay. This as an example. Okay. Uh, you know, before we get further into this, you probably want to change the name, so right click, change name, contact VDL, just to denote that this is the main channel where contact is loaded, and then snare output or snare out, and click OK here, change name, tenor out, and then here, click the name, go right click, change name, base out. Now, there will be some things you want to do that's common uh, for all three, um, you know, such as compression. Uh, if you want all the instruments to um, be just as punchy, um, giving them the same compressor, uh, com uh, compressor will be helpful. And um, another reason why you want to do that, for example, if you're going to compress all of these and you want all of them to sound punchy, um, if you're gonna have the same compressor settings, you will save system resources by creating a bus. So, created a bus by clicking on this channel. Say, for example, here we want to load a compressor. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter because I'm not gonna do this. So, we have a compressor set up. Um, what we want to do here, this line or this spot here, is the output for the channel. So right now it's set to the master, the bus, channel one. Same thing here, bus, channel one. Oh, wrong one. So it's channel one. And to be organized, let's change the name and switch it to line bus. Great. So you see here, now it's all nice, neat, and organized. We have our individual drumline instruments on separate EQs because the frequency information from each instrument is different, all going to the same compressor. 
And at this point, uh, if we're going further with this, you can do, you know, have them on the same reverb and, and so on and so forth. And there will be another video about how to do that in the near future. Okay, one more thing before I cut this video. I want to talk about organization. Any large ensemble score is going to have a lot of instruments and a lot of instances of, Vienna, of the Vienna Ensemble Pro uh, input. So you want to keep things organized. For me, what I've done is I set her, I've separated by instrument group, basically. Um, this first in, main instance is my woodwinds. This is my brass, drum line, and then... Um, the rest of these are various marimbas and um, uh, vibraphone and other keyboard instruments. Um, so, like I said, this one is my woodwind. So, if you go to Vienna to Vienna Ensemble Pro, open up the woodwind folder, you'll see they're all in channel one. Um, here, you'll see the brass are mostly in channel two. Uh, drum line, you'll see, is in uh, channel three. Okay. Um, and then I have each of my front ensemble instruments, all my marimbas, is, is their own uh, instance of, uh, of contact. So here, this first marimba one is uh, channel five or port five, marimba two is port six. The reason why I do that is with all the mallet changes um, and then cymbals, and then if you're adding any other auxiliary instruments, um, you kind of want to keep all that uh, organized to one instance of contact. And I will be doing another video kind of uh, going more in detail um, with all that. Okay, well, that about does it for this video. I want to thank you for watching and hope you found it informative. If you have any questions, um, reach out to me through the comments below or through social media. And I'll help you out as best I can. Thank you again for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.